Relationship fears are often based in our childhood experiences and when left unexamined can cause complications for our adult selves. Let's look at how they usually present and then talk about some strategies to overcome them. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Doris. I'm a relationship coach with a master's in psychology and I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. With fear of rejection, you believe that people aren't going to want to have anything to do with you because of what you say, what you look like, what you do, or any other criteria that made you feel rejected when you were a child. Here's how it might show up today. You avoid being vulnerable or authentic with your partner because you fear they won't like who you really are. You misinterpret comments or actions from your partner looking for proof that they don't really like you. You have an underlying belief that you're a bad person. Over time, you may be reluctant to join groups or avoid forming new friendships. And you're tense and nervous, feeling like an imposter because you're waiting for people to tell you they don't want you anymore. On the other side, abandonment fears usually stem from a traumatic loss you experienced during childhood. This could be the death of a parent or primary caregiver or your parents' divorce or a close friend moving away. Not having the emotional care and nurturing you needed to process that loss may lead to anxiety and even PTSD as an adult. Fear of abandonment generally revolves around being left by a significant person in your life and can show up as choosing unavailable partners to reinforce the status quo because you're used to it and there's a safety to having your expectations fulfilled. Being clingy or controlling in a relationship because you don't like being alone and you don't trust that your partner won't come back. Being jealous for no reason because you're afraid someone will take your partner away from you. Sabotaging your relationship and emotionally distancing yourself so it won't hurt as much if your partner leaves. Again, expecting they will and repeating the pattern that is known and therefore comfortable. There are a number of ways to overcome fear and the quickest will probably be hiring a professional to do coaching or therapy with you. But if those aren't an option right now, you can also commit to some serious self-care and try any or all of these strategies. Reframe fear as false evidence appearing real. Don't believe everything you think. Just because it feels like your partner is triggering you doesn't mean they are doing it on purpose. You are reacting out of old paradigms to a new situation. The situation may seem familiar, but the player is different. So try the mantra, that was then, this is now, to keep you grounded in the present. Understand that fear is a signal. Your body or brain thinks you're unsafe. If your partner is doing something that triggers your fear, know that your emotions are taking over and basically paralyzing the logical reasoning centers in your brain. There may not be much you can do in the moment, but hindsight will help you deconstruct the argument. And then with practice, you'll be able to get out of the grip faster. Be aware of and acknowledge your fear. Trying to push your fear away only intensifies it. All emotions are valid and are trying to teach us something. I saw a really great post on Instagram a while ago that said your feelings won't kill you, but what you're doing to try and avoid that feeling might. So I get that sometimes we all get overwhelmed and we just have to cope in the moment, maybe with food or screaming or watching TV or going to bed, but avoiding dealing with the issue doesn't make it go away. Communicate openly with your partner as they will probably be triggered by your reactions as well. If you feel yourself getting dysregulated, shift your body to shift the energy. E-motion is literally energy in motion. So if you're clenching up, shake your arms, hop up and down, whatever gets you moving. If you're sitting down, lean back and, you know, put your hands in your pockets. Literally sit as if you were the most relaxed person in the room. You can also try yawning or chewing something because your brain will think it's safe if it thinks you're eating. You may not feel relaxed yet, but put your body in a relaxed position and your brain will get the signal. Also, remember that you can do this. Take a deep breath, in for three, hold for four, out for five. That will calm your parasympathetic nervous system or really any technique where the exhale is longer than the inhale. If you're more visual, form a relaxing image in your mind. Maybe you're at a beach with gentle waves rolling in, or you're lying in a field under a tree and you're seeing the sunlight play with the leaves. Engage all your senses, colors, shapes, tastes, smells, and feelings to get your brain to relax. And if you're open to affirmations or mantras, use them. Let the statements or those words build you up and reinforce your strength and ability to handle life. The most powerful statement you can use is, I am that I am. And you know, you want to make sure that the, that stands for the quality that you want to call into your life in that moment. For example, I am safe, I am worthy of love, I am courageous, whatever that might be. If you're the journaling type, you will find some prompts in the descriptions. Taking care of yourself will help you become more self-reliant. In turn, learning to handle your fears will enhance your relationships. Check out this video next and I'll see you there.